Hi, everybody. Good morning. So when the ASCON team first asked me to speak, my initial reaction was, what's ASCON? Um, I actually come from a nonprofit management and youth development background, and I only dipped into the tech sector relatively recently. I ran strategy and monetization, eventually product management, for a consumer web startup based in LA that has since gone out of business. Um, I don't code, although if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see that on Wednesdays from 12 to 1, I'm actually trying to teach myself Python using Codecademy. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I am terrible. And even worse than that, I actually don't even get any of the jokes because I've never seen a Monty Python movie. So, so you can maybe understand why I was confused when I got that phone call. But ultimately, the team assured me, assured me that they just wanted me to speak about what it is that I do. And so I figured I could do that. Uh, and hopefully, you all will find it interesting. And actually, I think that not only should you find it interesting, um, but relevant, deeply relevant to what you all do and what you care about. And I hope that I can convince you of that. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about race. Uh, I'm actually specifically going to talk about diversity and specifically the lack of diversity in the tech sector and the innovation economy. Uh, so this is a super awkward topic. Uh, most people avoid it in their day-to-day -day lives. The advantage of a talk like this is that you guys don't have to talk back. You can just kind of listen to me. Uh, and I can't even really see your faces. So um, hopefully this will be a little less awkward than if we were over lunch. Uh, at least for you guys, probably not for me. Um, but this is actually exciting for me because for most of my life, I've really hated talking about race. As a mixed kid growing up on the ultra-diverse Upper West Side of Manhattan, the concept of race seemed confusing to me or even irrelevant. It seemed like every race was represented in the few city blocks around where I grew up, uh, so why even bother to try to figure it out? At least it seemed that way to me. Um, to others, I guess it was constantly relevant because people brought it up to me all the time. So by middle school, uh, that's me in middle school, uh, I had learned to anticipate the question, what are you, uh, by the uncomfortable expression a person would get on their face before they asked it. So race actually factored into a lot of my social interactions, even as a kid. Uh, and I am half black and half white, by the way. Hi, mom and dad. So we're talking about race. That's awkward. Uh, and I have showed you a picture of me from middle school, which is also super awkward. Um, so why am I subjecting you to this? Why did you wake up and come here to hear me be this awkward? Um, it's because I think today it's actually critical to talk openly about race. And it's so important that I subject myself to this kind of awkward situation on a daily basis. So why do I think it's that important? It's because the United States is in the middle of two major shifts. The first is the rise of the innovation economy. It's no surprise to this audience that software is eating the world. It's a key component in almost every industry today. Um, and that talent is in demand. Computing jobs are actually the fastest growing segment of jobs in the economy with some of the lowest unemployment rates. Software developers, um, these jobs are going unfilled. There are 100,000 jobs that will go unfilled each year. Uh, Code.org put together this visualization by the year 2020. That's set to be about a million jobs uh, at the rate that we're currently graduating computer science students. What's also interesting, I think, is that science, technology, engineering, and math uh, specifically software development, are starting to get a lot more mainstream attention as people realize that software development, coding, is key to our country's economic viability. I think the best example of this is Snoop Dogg over here. So that's the first shift. The second shift is a massive demographic shift that our country is undergoing. Today, 
90% of population growth comes from minority groups. The country is going to be majority-minority in the year 2040. And at that point, 42% of the population will be black or Latino. So in short, the country is going to look very different over the next 20 to 25 years. That's a different consumer base. And what's interesting to me is that that's a different workforce. So companies will need, in order to survive, to know how to find, attract, hire, retain diverse talent. It's no longer going to be a diversity issue. It's just going to be a matter of, do you have the employees you need to get your jobs done? So these trends certainly, I think, hint at something really big. But it starts to get interesting when you take it kind of beyond the abstract and look at how these two trends, the rise of the innovation economy and this demographic shift, are actually interacting. So in a world where the biggest growth of jobs is in tech and the biggest growth of workers, employees, is amongst minority groups, we're actually not seeing blacks and Latinos engaged in the tech sector at very high rates. And you can see here that this actually isn't purely an education issue. Even for those who get computer science degrees, the college to career pipeline is broken. It's bad nationwide. You can see that 18% to 9% drop. But it's actually even a little worse where I'm based in Silicon Valley. That's 7% number. What's particularly troubling to me, though, is the right-hand side of this graph, these leadership numbers. That's the 5% and then the 1% of founders. And that's because it means that those earlier in the pipeline, middle school, high school, college, those students entering their first jobs, they aren't seeing people who look like them succeed in this industry. Research shows that role models are incredibly important to success. And we're seeing a pretty shocking lack of role models for black and Latino students when it comes to those who look like them. So the role model issue aside, I think the numbers paint a pretty stark picture. If you take, for example, an average Silicon Valley meetup, about 75 attendees, if you're a black or Latino, there's maybe one other person of your racial background there. If you're at a smaller or founder-focused gathering, you're probably the only one, if you're even there at all. So let's apply those numbers to OSCON. Uh, I'm told there's about 3,000 people here this week. Uh, and if that's representative, if this population is representative of tech workers generally, um, then almost 2,000 of those 3,000, about 1,850, are white. Another 900 or so are Asian, and around 150 are Latino, and just 120 of those 3,000 would be black. So that can be pretty lonely, isolating, and discouraging, and I actually think it's worse when nobody talks about it. So this is a pretty good summary of the tech industry's diversity problem. And now I think is a good time to take a little step back. The numbers are bad, those are the facts, but the interesting question I think is, do you care? If this precipitous drop off from portion of the population, even portion of computer science grads, the portion of tech employees, leaders, founders, if that doesn't bother you, if that doesn't get you thinking about why or whether it matters, then probably you should just tune me out for the next few minutes. But my hunch is that this community will care. I admit I'm an outsider. I've never written a line of open source code. I'm not even sure if my Python lunch breaks count. But what I find intriguing and really exciting about the open source community is that it really defines itself as a community. And it's a community based on a core value of universal access. What we're seeing now, this lack of diversity, this broken college to career pipeline, is a clear signal to me that there isn't universal access to careers in technology the way we'd like to believe. So if you're curious or intrigued, maybe this is something you've already been wondering about, or maybe what I've shared so far has caused you to take notice, then you care. And I think that's a big first step towards doing something. So in 2012, my co-founder, Tristan Walker, and I decided that we cared and we were going to do something. 
And so we launched a summer fellowship program, the Code 2040 Fellows Program. We bring top performing black and Latino software developers together for the summer. We set these students up with internships at top, top tech companies, and we provide a robust leadership development curriculum on the evenings and weekends. Our goal is to fast track these students to success, to get them farther faster by giving them the support and the networks that they need to excel. We have 18 students this summer, they're amazing. And I actually encourage you, if you're curious, to go to our website, code2040.org, and click on the blog, and you can actually hear from them directly. You can hear why they chose Code 2040, what it means to them, and what their experience has been like. And I encourage you to do that because it's actually been through interacting with the fellows that my own view on the tech industry's diversity problem has shifted. It's actually something one of our inaugural fellows said. So this is Amy Kiespe. Uh, she's one of the first five in the pilot class. You can see she's looking lovely and self-assured, and I'm looking awkward again, uh, like I'm actually trying to photobomb a picture that is being taken of me. Um, so it's something that Amy said last fall that opened my mind to how to think about the future of Code 2040 and the future of the industry. She said to me simply, diversity isn't the problem here. Diversity is the opportunity. Thinking about our industry's lack of diversity, particularly racial diversity as a problem, has made us afraid to talk about it. After all, no one likes to be told that they have a problem and no one likes to fixate on their problems. So let's leave, reframe and see this for what I honestly think it really is. The tech industry has a great opportunity to live up to its potential of universal access and to do it where no industry has truly succeeded before it. Our industry is awesome. I want to keep it that way and I want to make it better. I think we can draw more talent and more innovation into the tech sector. We can maximize our own potential by creating pathways for diverse talent to enter, stay, and succeed. So I'll give you a quick concrete example of some of the work that we're doing to create universal access. We're actually currently piloting a toolkit that's full of resources to help students get that first top tech internship. Through our application process, we had 400 applicants from over 150 schools for our 18 spots this summer. We realized that a lot of talented students didn't know uh, that they needed things like side projects, a GitHub profile, coding samples, in order to get top internships. Nobody was telling them that doing well in class wasn't enough. So we're telling them. It's a pretty simple idea, but just putting up a collection of things that students should know about and resources to help them get better. So this is what we're doing, uh, amongst many other things. This is my full-time job, but I'm guessing it's not yours. So what can you do? So we're working on that too. Dozens, if not hundreds, of people have asked me that question since we launched Code 2040 a year and a half ago. And we're working hard to come up with as many answers as possible. As a start, if you're in the Bay Area, or soon New York, uh, you can get involved with the Code 2040 Fellows Program directly. If you're elsewhere, we're actually working on a national tour focused on sharing that toolkit and these resources widely on coaching students on how to get that first top technical internship. So we'd love your support reaching as many students as possible, whether you want to be a coach yourself or whether you want to introduce us around in your community, online or off. You can find us in any of these ways. Mostly, though, Code 2040 is just part of the puzzle. So I'd really encourage you to take a cue from our students and do what you do best. Next weekend, our fellows are anchoring a 24-hour hackathon themed around Hack for Diversity. They're taking submissions from local nonprofits. They're coming up with ideas on their own. And for 24 hours, they're putting all their skills towards creating solutions that help diversify the tech sector. They've decided that they aren't happy with the level of diversity that they see. They're engaging their community to support their quest to pave the way for other students of color coming along behind them. I'd encourage you to engage your own communities, to think about what universal access really looks like, 
to think about, maybe even talk about, awkwardly even, our industry's diversity opportunity. After all, this is an industry known for innovation. I have no doubt that as a community, we can innovate a solution here too. Thank you.